What is going on guys? This is Ben here coming at you really tired, really early in the morning and or late at night, whatever you want to call it. It's 3 a.m. right now. The challenge came out at 1, uh, 1 a.m. in the morning for me and uh, I've been up grinding the 2v2 challenge with my clan mates here and I was able to get 15 wins. Would have been on my first try, I want to say. But we got it on the second try. The reason why I say that, I'll show you the replay after. My <laughs> the person I won with, his name is Randy. Uh, we actually ended up going 15-0 on his account, which is really, really awesome. But we ended up going 15-1 on mine. But the first time we were playing, I was 13-2. We're getting into our 14-game match. And guess what? Randy doesn't show up. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, what is going on? And I just got destroyed. I'll show you guys that replay in a little bit. But yes, 15 win, 2v2 CRL challenge. If I look a little tired, I'm sorry. But I'm going to give you guys the best tips to hopefully allow you guys to also get 15 wins. It's actually pretty It's pretty nice. I guess that you can go on with any one of your teammates no matter what wins they're at. So I don't know if that how that affects the matchmaking, if it matches you with the, more, the player that has the most wins, like to keep it on par. I'm not sure, but we're going to collect this 220,000 gold. I should have did this on my second account where I actually need gold but no worries I think I can handle and get to the get to the victories but if I if you guys watched yesterday's video I showed you guys the tips the battle decks that were rocking the battle decks that were good and I did not I was not joking a lot of you guys didn't believe me like, I even mentioned that in my clan so yeah then Queen Pekka goes this Pekka deck is awesome Ben but literally a lot of comments a lot of people were like yo that's not that great of a deck but then I was like no I don't know what I was saying here I must have been autocorrect it's late guys I'm sorry no one was believe if me I was trying to say no one was believing me like it was good uh, but we had a few believers in there Randy was playing it so the battle deck that I was using was this golem battle deck guys I wouldn't change a thing about the golem battle deck. I really, really like it. The fireball is nasty. It, it basically shuts down Inferno Dragons because it knocks them back and sets them down, takes care of three musketeers. The zap is also there for Inferno Towers, whatever. The chip tower damage is crazy. You need the tornado. The tornado is key. And then the golem. So I'm going to show you guys some replays. I'll talk about the play style of how you want to play this. A lumberjack is awesome and also the night witch. Now you can substitute these out, like throw a mini, mini peck in here if you don't have some of the legendaries and another good card that you could want to use this goblin gang if you really don't have it or i would say the valkyrie works as well or dark prince any of those substitutes if you don't have these four elixir legendaries but your partner what they want to rock is this pekka battle deck now if you like if you prefer the pekka use the pekka if you prefer the golem but these two together are such a cohesive unit that is it insane like the pekka with the log with the guards now the okay we were using the bandit but I know not everyone has the bandit, so I'm showing you. I'm showing you alternatives here. So you could do this is the battle deck that we won with, and it's really really solid. But if you do not have the bandit, I would say go with guards. Now the miner is kind of a key piece here because he's the one that allows you to do crazy pushes. Well, he basically like when your when your enemies kill your troops, the miner allows you to get those troops pushing to the tower and save your like your low health troops. And then also he takes care of a lot of problem like some wizards, he takes care of elixir collectors, and this person is going to be rocking the poison. Now if you want to have the golem person run the poison and then the Pekka person run the uh, the fireball, whatever, just have a poison, have a fireball because they both do different things and they both come in clutch. And then this person is going to be rocking the log because one of you is going to have a zap, one of you is going to have a log. You both have the turn Tornado. a lot of times you're going to activate your king tower from a hog rider pulling the hog rider with the tornado or the goblin barrel and then executioner is the absolute key card you want to put like you want to put him behind all of your pushes he takes care of everything and that's why you both have tornadoes and the baby dragon helps that with that too so these battle decks together man copy them whatever i've told you guys this was a great pekka battle deck that i've been using I i've been using it since 2v2s have come out in clan wars like it's literally awesome paired out with the pekka it's very solid so we get into the replays here here i'll even show you the tournament so we were 2v2 13 and 13 out of 15 and then we were 15 out of 15 but yeah i think i could have won my first one if randy wi-fi didn't cut out and leave uh so here we'll get into our our first winning match here I'm gonna talk about how the strategy goes out so I kind of like normally when you're a lot of, okay if you if you've never played heavy battle axe before the number one tip I can tell you is do not overcommit to pushes if you're low on elixir just try and reset and it's amplified in 2v2 because elixir is a little bit slower so you do not want to be the first team to drop you want to be reactive I know I was telling Randy that so like what you want to do is sit back on your towers and just wait till your opponent drops because you can win in double elixir you want to play in double elixir with this battle deck because your main push is throwing down a golem and having the pekka behind it 
because it's crazy because the golem's gonna eat all the damage and the peck is just gonna destroy everything and then if you compare an executioner behind there but you have to be careful you don't want to just stack up so many troops in one lane that you could just get ultimately destroyed by an executioner or a rocket so here kind of a little bit of a slower start if you don't have any like super aggressive cards in your hand like the golem or a pack right off the opening start it's okay you can cycle a little bit don't be afraid to cycle a zap or anything but this was actually a very tough matchup versus the sparky i believe they both had sparkies i kind of want to see what their battle decks are so one guy was rocking the mega knight the other one was using the giant but big push coming in here and i was a little bit worried so i just kind of went to my tornado and i was like you know what i gotta get to this fireball but we survived the opening push from their Sparky, because that was the first time actually dealing with the Sparky, but... <sighs> coming in clutch here, you can see the Executioner coming out too, the Minion's help, like, it just... It feels like you, you have a counter for everything. Now, if you overcommit and you over-defend, like, you have to coordinate with your teammate pretty well on this, like... Like, flash your cards, like, drag them onto the map sometimes before you drop them, like, say it's a Goblin Barrel coming onto your tower, so hover your card first, and if your teammate is hovering too, one of you pull back. Like, you don't want to waste the elixir on this, especially in the 2v2s. Uh, it's actually set to pretty behind. So try not to overlap in destroying the same cards. But you can see, this is the main push here. We have the golem going with the pack up. And I, one other tip too, that uh, this is something that I find I see not a whole lot of people do, but I do it, and it works very, very well. And say there's an executioner that you cannot get onto your opponent's side. And it's just like just shredding all your troops over and over again because as this challenge goes on maybe people are going to see these battle acts and find out yes executioner with tornadoes are crazy in this challenge what you sometimes want to do is if you're having to push going down the lane you want to use your tornado to just drag the executioner right to you like your pekka or your lumberjack or whatever just drag it right to your troop uh, i don't know if i do it in any of these matches but sometimes, like, you have to do that. Otherwise, they're just going to continue to get value with that executioner and take care of all your stuff. So, a lot of times, it's like two tornadoes, like, going right next to each other because they're tornadoing your stuff together and you're trying to bring their executioner to you. And it actually works pretty well because you take care of their executioner and then their, tor their tornado is kind of, like, nullified. Uh, but this is a very close match. You can see our tower on the left is going down. But the baby dragon coming in clutch with that nice little chip damage there for the 15th win. I was so excited for that. Uh, I don't know how much of a win streak we had to go on, but if, if I just show you this. Like, this is all battle decks using this, the same combo battle decks with Randy here. So win, 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 win. A defeat here was to a P.E.K.K.A. Royal Hogs and a Elite Barbarian. So, got a little bit destroyed there. Uh, well, the main card that we were having issues with was those Royal Hogs, and I wasn't able to fully get rid of their Executioner at times. So, that was the tough part. But, win, win, win. Another defeat here. We had the Executioner. See? Executioner in there, but the Balloon and the Lava Hound. This is the one that I think Randy actually left me. I'm pretty sure, because I'm pretty sure this was my 13 win. I just want to watch this to make sure because yeah i'm pretty sure I, I was a little like come on i was 13 and 0 here and it's just me dropping at the moment you can see randy not even making plays here and we just get annihilated and we get three crowns so yeah this is the one that was 13 with what happened was he was a little bit on shaky wi-fi we were playing earlier um and i think i lost two matches because of that but we got lucky one time <laughs> Like one time Randy actually lagged out and I don't know what it was like it was we were only on six wins and one of the persons like my enemy it was just me playing versus another guy that was tryharding like crazy but his teammate was just like trying to kill the king tower with like a poison and a miner pretty sure he was trolling but it was okay uh but yeah so guys the battle deck's solid it goes up it has good matchup versus a lot of things I'll show you guys another one where we three crown though you do get a lot of three crowns with this I will say another thing when you take one of their towers this is kind of just general stuff like when you take one of the towers and you have a decent sized push but they're all kind of weak troops going to their king tower you do not have to follow up with that push the smarter thing would be to do is maybe put another golem or a pekka on your back right or like say we took the left hand tower and we had a little bit weak uh, tower damage or something a lot of times people will try and push with that in three crown and then their troops will just get destroyed and then you're kind of set back just go for a different tower. Just like put your stuff in the like behind your king tower in the back and push forward. So this was a little interesting here going up against double expo though. 
Like, I'm pretty sure they planned this for sure. Two Expos are tough to deal with, for sure. I was a little bit scared, but we countered the first Expo. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna throw my goal in the back. I was not expecting the second one, but Randy had the P.E.K.K.A. in hand. So this is what won us the game, pretty much countering their two Expos, and then now I'm having a push to go with, and they can't really defend it, but one other thing. Do not carelessly drop your pack out. I'm just giving you guys general tips. I know a lot of you probably know this, but like, if your opponent drops the golem, you don't always have to throw the pack up behind it. I feel like some people just always try and do that. What you want to save your pack up for is defense mainly, and then if nothing's going on really, then you can throw that pack up behind your your golem there, or you know they're a little bit lower on elixir because a lot of times they see you throw on the golem, they're gonna try aggressively push one of your lanes. Really, really hardcore. So you want to have that P.E.K.K.A. to defend it because the P.E.K.K.A. is such a good defensive card. It stalls for time and it just like takes care of so many things. So be a, be hesitant throwing down your P.E.K.K.A. behind the Golem. Just wait to see if your opponent rushes your other lane because you might have to be the person defending it because the person that just dropped the Golem is out 8 Elixir. Unless you're in double Elixir, it's a little bit better. You can be a little bit quick about it, but... Just general tips here, but it's, it's you have outs for everything. Like you have the, the log for the log bait and stuff. You have the zap for Inferno Dragon, and the Inferno Towers and all that good stuff. Even the zap, uh, what was I say zap? Even the Sparky, you got, and then the Fireball is like the other counter um, to Inferno Dragon. It's also good against the Three Musketeers and the Poison. I feel like I'm repeating myself now. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm just saying, the battle decks mesh so well together. And I saw this in the video where I was talking about the 15 win challenge. Like this is, I try to get like my teammates to use this for only like not so much this time this time around in wars, but for wars when it was like the regular draft and the two v two drafts, these were the battle acts I would try to construct with my clanmates because they work so well. Now you don't have to follow these to an exact T. The main cards I think that you want to have are Baby Dragon, uh, Golem, and Tornado for the Golem side. On the Pekka side, you want Executioner, Tornado, and Pekka. Like those are the only three cards. Then obviously, like I would say, a combination of Fireball, Poison, and then Zap, um, Log. But other than that, you can mix and match what cards you would like. Just try not to make it too heavy. Uh, yeah, like I said, do not be the first to drop though. That is, that's one of the key things there. <laughs> did I open up this chest yet? I did. Ah, those are the main tips. I wanted to keep it kind of short because I'm a little bit tired. I do want to get some sleep. I'm just grinding the two v twos, but definitely fun. The challenge is awesome. I wish you guys luck. Uh, honestly, there's also numerous battle decks that have won in this challenge, so these aren't the only ones like must all be all you have to use these because there's so many different decks that are going to be winning or whatever that are going to be successful in this challenge. So if, they, if you guys got, did well in the channel, if you guys did well in the challenge and actually ended up winning uh, for the 15 wins, tweet me your battle decks. I'll tweet them out, share them with people, maybe show them some more for the videos. Uh, also, just maybe comment down below. Let's help people out. Try and get that 15 wins because we know how crucial the 220,000 gold is for everyone. Plus, plus those two legendaries. I think I got two Electro Wizards on this count. I mean, we're maxed out anyways, but I'm inching near that 5 million gold. So, that's cool. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Stay tuned for awesome Clash Royale videos. I'm going to head to sleep, and I'll see you guys later.